Hello, welcome pen friends. I'm back with another ink profile. And today we're doing the next one, uh, which is J. Arbon Emerald of Chavour from the 1670 line. Now this is quite the ink. It is uh, difficult to capture the, the accurate color on camera because it's a blue green, but the camera wants to make it more blue even than it is. So just keeping that in mind, remember I always say get a sample and this is, it couldn't be more true in this case. So this is a shimmer ink. It's got gold shimmer and it's also got a beautiful red sheen that appears in um, painted on and in the writing and we'll be looking at that. So this is a sample that, um, it's like my third sample and uh, I've already gone through two mils of the four that I just bought. I bought two more samples to review. I probably should have just gotten the bottle, but you know, um, too much ink is can be difficult too. So let's hop right in and I'll show you. I already did the bath test yesterday. Did it and I and set a timer and that's how I plan to do it from now on. This seems to be very typical fountain pen ink. You do see a little bit left over like you could almost read it but it's pretty much gone. So that's how that came out. But let's get right in the Rhodia Gold Book. This has 90 gram paper in it. Keep that in mind as we look at what happened in here because I was a little bit surprised. Okay, let me show you that glimmer if I can on that Tamari River sample. You can see that gold sh uh, shimmer, <laughs> you know, the, the, the beautiful gold there and also that halo, that beautiful red that appears. So it's quite quite interesting. Now it's funny but it didn't quite do that over here on the rhodia paper but it's still very pretty and if you get the light just right which is very difficult to do you can see the shimmer. Um, I can see it right here really good. So here it is in the broad nib <clears throat> and uh, gosh it was drying so quickly I couldn't believe it. I It smeared a little at five inches but on this particular paper it dried pretty fast. So it's available just about everywhere. I saw Goulet Pens has the 50 ml bottle, which it comes in pretty bottle like this. Um, this is my amethyst. It's out of a different line, but the bottles are very similar. It, have, it has the beautiful wax seal on it and everything. Um, then the 2 ml sample at Goulet is 225. Okay, the bottle costs more, but they have larger samples at Pen Chalet. You could get a 4 ml sample for 425. Um, and at Anderson, you could get a three mil sample for 250. That's very nice. Then later on, I, I found out from a pen friend, pen friend Marilyn, that you could get a five mil sample of this ink at Jet Pens for, I think it's 495. So, I mean, that, that's a discovery I didn't make, but I'm glad to know about it. In case you were already ordering there, that would be nice. So it looked, still looked really nice in the fine nib. And then it got really, really drastic and pretty in the oh that's wrong and that's supposed to say 1.5 I'm so used to writing with a 1.1 stub but it is a 1.5 uh, it's the Jen Hao let me show you this is a new edition so I did want to mention that for those who don't realize I'm now using a stub which was a great idea from a viewer and I also had been dabbling around with that myself anyway and I don't know why I didn't pull a trigger on showing it to you. So um, it's a 1.5 and it looked really good on the Tamoy River paper. We'll get to that. But it dried super fast. It was almost like, what? What am I forgetting to count? But no, it was drying fast on this particular paper. And you know, the gold shimmer, the red sheen, it does bleed through this paper. We're going to flip it over in a minute. And here is the chromatography. I can see a little bit of glitter left over, you know, and then it just kind of rises up and stays pretty true to its color. And then it kind of gives you a little crust a darker at the top. Very interesting. But it did, I mean, it's, it's a little bit unusual for, for ink to bleed through this paper. It's not as unusual for it to happen on the broad nib serendipity because that's a dip hybrid pen and I do try to get a lot of the ink off to start it off and I write on my underneath papers so it could happen in the broad nib a little bit more often 
but it, it uh, even in the Lamy fine nib, there's seepage. I mean, I call it bleed through though, because I don't like that. I don't want that on the next page. I don't want to write on here. And then it wasn't terribly surprising that it did it in the uh, 1.5 millimeter stub, but I just wanted you to be aware of that because that that's a factor. But then we have a little bit different results on some other paper. So let's get into the CVS caliber paper, the mighty, mighty caliber paper, four by six notebook. Okay, this kind of ink is perfect for this paper because first off, it also shows off its beauty. It, it really does. And then I don't know if you can see, but I can see all kinds of red um, highlighting in the letters even and shade, I'd call it shading, but it's like red and, and uh, blue green, you know, it just, it's pretty neat. It doesn't do what Tomoy River paper does, but it does quite a bit of interesting stuff here, which is very difficult to capture. But the most impressive thing to me is that uh, it doesn't bleed through. It, it shadows heavily where you painted, but there's no bleed through and it's, Rhodia 90 GSM paper did. So, I mean, this is the exact same conditions, exact same pens and nibs. So anyway, I wrote down great ink paper combo and I believe that. I wish it wasn't showing it so blue though. It, it, you know, it's blue green, heavy on the blue, but yet this is ridiculous the way it's coming through. So this is the cheap copy paper, 20 pound copy paper. I wanted to get that out of the way before we dive into Claire Fontaine and um, Tomoy River paper. So here it is in the broad nib, flattens out. You don't get any of the red. You get a little gold sheen on the painted part. That was nice. And you know, you can appreciate the ink for the color and the fine nib pretty well um, without so much feathering. It does feather though. I can see spots where it's feathered. And it just, but it wasn't any good, I didn't think, in the broad nib or the 1.5 stub on this paper. Um, and then, you know, <laughs> No more bleeding on this though than I got on the Rhodia. Don't ask me why. I'm sure there's a scientific reason, but here's a lot of seepage and bleed through and then just dots and tries to pretty hard. Not, it didn't try as hard though on this. Must have just had more to soak into, I guess. Okay, so now here is the Claire Fontaine little pocket size notebook. So this is 90 gram GSM uh, Claire Fontaine, which is quite amazing stuff. There it is painted on in the corner. And we get a lot of like shading, but not so much of the red. You can't really see that red haloing or um, sheen on here. You, in, in the nibs that I was using, you see a little bit of the glitter uh, quite well. It looks nice. You know, it, it does shimmer here and there. Very difficult to show, but absolutely no bleed through. Just a tiny, tiny where it tried to seep through the painted part, but nobody does that. That's just a testing type thing that I do to see how the paper does. So let's see, I was trying to see if I could, oh, it's difficult to show that shimmer. That's too bad. Okay, let's get into Tomoy River paper now. We got a lot to see here. <clears throat> this is 52 GSM Tomoy River paper. And you you know, you get all that beauty that there is to get on this paper. It's red, it's gold sheen, shimmer, whatever. It's really nice. Um, okay, and then you get all kinds of stuff. What appears as shading at, at the surface where the letters are lighter at the top and, and you see that red tint, you gotta kinda hold it close to your eyes and there's even haloing around the one and the two, the number and the plus sign. Again, very difficult to show. Took a long time to dry on here though. It was insane. So, you know, anything longer than that, I, I rely on my bot blotter paper. It was dry at 30 seconds in the fine nib, which is good. And then uh, back in the uh, one point, I can't get that right, can I? I'm so used to writing with a 1.1, if anything, but I really like this stub, the Goulet stub on that pen. Anyway, it is a 1.5. I'm probably gonna have to correct it everywhere. It had a nice little halo, so I did a drawing, and it's, um, let's see, I'm having a hard time showing it. Okay, but if I remember correctly, no bleed through, and Tamoy River paper always has some ghosting because it's so thin. Let's see, and over here, yeah, 
it seeped through where it was painted on, but it, it held up really well everywhere else. So that was good. Good, good, good. Okay. Now let's look at the 68 GSM Tomorrow River paper in the Live Notes by Pen Gallery booklet, which we're going through not too quickly, I guess, but we're, ooh, we're almost halfway. Okay, let's see if I can hold this just right so you can see the prettiness. It does have a lot of um, that gold shimmer, um, just real pretty. And then put it in a broad nib and can see, I can see the shimmer. Um, and it, and it is a really good shimmering ink, but you have to get your lighting just right to be able to really see it good. Here it is in the fine nib. It took a while to dry on here, but it wasn't as long as it was on the 52. Uh, at 18 seconds in the fine nib, it was almost dry, and it was, it was passable to work with as long as you weren't going to fold it right then. So I would recommend the blotter paper. And here we go again. Oh my, I didn't realize I was making that mistake, but I really want it corrected because I don't want to look back on it and think that that was a different nib. And I put, wow, I love this. Yeah, I, I'm really starting to enjoy working with a stub. It's very pretty. Okay, we really need to get through this because the comparisons are going to be our main thing. But I did want to show you how it came out in the Cafe Note by N Nanami Paper Company. Um, really quite impressive in here and it, it's going to darken the reason it's darkening so much is because i got so much of the red sheen coming through and that's what happens when you then introduce uh the camera and the and the light i've got a lot of natural light off to the left here so it just here it is in the stub and then i moved into the broad nib and into the fine nib and uh i just thought it was so pretty you but you get a lot of red you can probably see that that's just colored in with a fine um, Lamy fine nib. And it does not bleed through. It, it, of course it ghosts because it's to my river paper, but that's really nice to be confident about using a, a 1.5 stub like that in the notebook. I like that. Okay, next, we're gonna look at the comparison panel and then I'm gonna show you the um, very specific colors that I went ahead and, and compared this to. So right in the middle is our ink of the day, J. Herbon, Emerald of Chivore, 1670. Um, so they're all getting the same treatment here on a white panel with the, with the same light and camera and everything else. So hopefully you're familiar with at least one of these inks so that you can kind of place it. But at first glance, it seems like Colorverse Gravity Wave to me appeared to be the most similar. Then when we, I got in a nib, it was different. But it does have that red sheen that kind of makes me think of it. And it is that blue-green that leads very heavily toward blue versus green. So there was so much comparison there. And then, uh, interestingly, my husband said right away that Ferris Wheel Press Bluegrass Velvet was what he thought was the most similar, and I didn't. But when it got in a nib, I'll show you that in a minute, that was very interesting. Now, I put two of the blue-green inks I have that lean more toward green down here. Robert Oster Tranquility, right down here. And then beside it, Diamine Aurora Borealis, which, you know, it, it, they go right over into green. And then I even put the lighter, um, brighter uh, Diamine Steel Blue down here because that's these are kind of out of the range, but it shows you that other side of things. And then really, Pilot Orochizuku Kujaku is very similar. And when we got in a nib, I found that to be true. So we'll see that in a minute. And then Lamy Crystal Amazonite, it, it was interestingly similar, I thought. I really thought Robert Oster Clearwater Rain was way out there, but I thought it wouldn't hurt to put one on there that is closer to what I would call a turquoise, just to kind of see how that looked. Now, I got a couple of a stack that we can look at. So this just came through from um, Goulet Pens. I showed you the big panel. And this is their uh, Jacques Arbonne. Uh, it's one of their blue inks that at first I thought was going to be so similar, but it's much bluer, much, much bluer. You can kind of tell, well, especially down here beside the green ones, but even beside this one, 
it's out of there so but I thought I'd show it anyway because we just got that in and then here's Ackerman's um, I don't know why but number five Dutch Masters just wanted to show you we just talked about that one it certainly would be complimentary but different and then here's Robert Oster fire and ice I think somebody asked about that one the other day and that you know that's quite different it doesn't have as much green in it that's for sure uh, then we've got way off the whack here diamine marine and that's you know it's brighter it's much more of a turquoise but it's lighter even than uh, clear water rain and then well diamine aqua lagoon just because some of us know a lot about what that looks like and maybe that would help place it and then another one of my favorites Ancre classic turquoise Hmm, I think I was thinking of Blue Cal and Q when I was saying favorites. But anyway, that just shows you a little bit more of comparison. So now let's hop on to, this is Claire Fontaine, 90 gram French ruled paper. Everything is going to have a tendency to darken here because there's a lot of red in these top two inks. And there's actually red sheen in, in Kujaku too, so it's going to wreak havoc with us. But I think we can still get something out of this. So these are all used um, with a paintbrush on the side and then the Moon Man glass nib, um, well, you've seen it a hundred times, the glass nib pen. So they're all exactly the same. And I did make a note that this ink, that today's ink is flowy and it empties off the glass nib very quickly. It does, um, started to kind of fade toward the end there. But I, I did them all the same way. I didn't re-dip, I just, you know, I just, went right through so it's dark when it starts and it then it starts to kind of get normal for itself right in the middle there somewhere right here so then I put colorverse gravity wave and determined that there's so much red sheen in that that it darkens the ink and it doesn't really look the same in in a nib or at least in this nib and I would think that would hold true it comes across darker on the page then I went to Robert Oster tranquility which is so much greener that that is noticeable to the eye anyway. And it probably is to you even here. See how much greener it is? Then uh, Pilot Roshizuku Kujaku, which you start to really look, really start to be a good comparison ink here. Um, of course, without the shimmer, but you still have that beautiful red sheen that's going to show up at times. And then Lamy Crystal Amazonite. That had a lot less red and certainly doesn't have the shimmer, but it, it, it's really a look-alike in the nib after you get to that point right around the middle. And it's lighter, though. I would still say Pilot Roshizuku Kujaku looks more like it. And then, you know, amazingly, Ferris Wheel Press Blue Velvet. Now, that's got a lot of red sheen as well. And, and uh, that's the one my husband thought was the most similar. Let's turn this because we may then be able to see. I don't know. It's difficult to see, but it was a really nice study, a, a good way to do this. And hopefully it'll have a little bit of value for you. If I had to pick, I would say, you know, like Pilot Hiroshizuku, the Kujaku looks a lot like it in a nib. And... Uh, yeah, and really the, the Ferris Wheel Press does too. That's a, an ink from Canada, a little bit harder to get in terms of cost and, you know, shipping for some of us. But, okay, and then, I don't know, if you didn't mind not having your red sheen, then you could be really super happy with the Lamy Crystal Amazonite because it gets you in that color where we want to be maybe if we like the color of Emerald of Shavor and if we don't want shimmer. So there we have that. Okay, I hope that was a little bit useful to you. And then here is the visual journal. I thought it really reacted nice with that. It, it, it even gives you a lot of red sheen up there around that crusted little fireball in the sky and here like almost like a thunderstorm. It's quite pretty and, and, and quite a bit of the shimmer kind of lasts so it looks nice on the tree you get to see it in person anyway if you try this at home and I won't say don't try it I'll say it would be worth trying it was fun so there we go okay I wonder oh my I didn't mean to I thought I was gonna make it shorter by cutting out the water test but no 
Okay, so what did you think of this ink? Uh, have you used it and written with it? I actually really love it, but I think you do need to pick and choose your papers. On the other hand, I do have laying here, this is Pen and Gear <clears throat> notebook from Walmart. And I wrote on this with the fine nib and it didn't go through. I was quite surprised. Now this is made in India paper. I don't know if that distributed by Walmart, made in India, and they're labeled as pen and gear. And a pen friend sent me this. She writes all her letters on this paper. So um, you know who you are and you'd be happy <laughs> with, with the fine nib anyway, with this ink, because it looks nice. It doesn't display shimmer and red sheen so much, but it, it's nice and saturated and it flows well on this paper. It feels good writing on it. Okay, I've gotten too wordy. I will see you on the next review. We're going right down the line. So next will be Monteverde Moonstone. And I just want to wish you a good week. Have a great week, actually. Bye for now.